Okay, so we've looked at the pre-dynastic and early dynastic um, art and, and uh, architecture of ancient Egypt. Then we just looked at the Old Kingdom uh, with the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx and that kind of thing. Now we're going to briefly look at the Middle Kingdom. And I know this is pretty truncated. Um, some of you have many research assignments related to Middle Kingdom things in the discussion. So we'll hear a little bit more about this. But I'm pretty brief with the Middle Kingdom. Okay, so what does the Middle Kingdom mean? It's also called the period of reunification. So um, between 2050 BC and 1710 BC, this is the period we call the Middle Kingdom. So a fairly substantial amount of time. Um, in this time, uh, the unity of the country of Egypt is uh, sort of more united and strengthened under Mentuhotep II. He's from the 11th dynasty. And then um, after the reunification, so it splits into upper and lower again um, between the Old and Middle Kingdoms, and then it's reunified and that unification is strengthened. After the reunification, the kings were able to um, kind of turn their focus back to arts and culture. So in times of upheaval throughout history, a lot of times we don't have as, as much um, development in terms of art and culture in times of stability we tend to have more okay so let's look at one of the kings from this period maybe if my slides want to work there we go um so this is uh Sinusret the second um and this is a sculpture even though it's just a fragment which is portrayed in kind of an unprecedented level of realism okay uh, we have a little bit of a facial expression he's got like a little ghost of a smile going on here it's not so stiff it's not so impassive um, he's the fourth pharaoh of the 12th dynasty so between 1897 and 1878 is when he rolls uh, BC and so we can see the slight shift, still fairly stiff, but a little bit more of a softer kind of flesh-like look than the very, very stiff uh, Khafre sculpture that we were seeing um, from the Old Kingdom. Okay, the other big thing, other than slightly more realism, more um, naturalism in sculpture in this time period, is what is happening in architecture, particularly with tombs, which are kind of, as I've said over and over again, a big deal in Egypt because uh, of the Ka and, and the life after death aspect of their culture is, is very important. So this is um, Beni Hassan in Egypt. And um, this is a, it's basically a cemetery site. It's kind of a necropolis, a city of the dead. Um, and here, rather than building pyramids, the tombs are dug out of the cliff. So these are carved into the rock of the cliff, which is pretty impressive when you look at these things, that they're carved that deeply in. These columns are carved out. They're highly decorated on the inside. Lots of frescoes, frescoes being um, mural paintings on the walls. These are fresco secco. Fresco secco means um, that they are painted on a dry wall. Later we'll talk about the difference between fresco buono and fresco secco. Fresco buono is painted in wet plaster so that as the plaster cures the paint, the first layer of paint becomes part of the wall. It's really used much, much later a lot in uh, the Renaissance, for example. Anyway, fresco secco, which literally means fresh dry in Italian, which is kind of funny. Uh, okay, so this is cemetery site where we have dug into the cliffs. We're 150 some odd miles south of Cairo, um, and there are about 39 tombs that have been fully um, excavated here. And of them, many of them are painted, are highly painted, and because they were dug into the cliffside, uh, these paintings are pretty well preserved. So we have lots of hieroglyphics. But we also have these scenes, and they're kind of, um, they're scenes of daily life. So depending on who's buried there and what they did, you see scenes of, of them um, going about their day in a typical daily life kind of fashion. So we see narrative art. We not only have the hieroglyphics um, telling the, this person's life, but also um, there's a lot of things from the Book of the Dead that are inscribed in, in tombs kind of to make sure that they go to the place and everything but also scenes from daily life. So we have 
people fishing uh, on these boats up above uh, and the one below it's showing um, all these other scenes from daily life. So we have these great uh, preserved records of what Egyptian life was like in this time period. Okay, then the Hyksos, H-Y-K-S-O-S, invade and they conquer Egypt. Egypt falls. Uh, this is in 1640 BC. They are of mixed Semitic and Asian descent, so they originated somewhere north of Palestine. Um, and then they're driven out in 1532 BC. Then we get Amos the first, and he conquers and drives out all the Hyksos who, uh, who formed the 15th and 16th dynasties of Egypt, and Amos the first rule begins the new kingdom. Okay, so the next lecture will be on the new kingdom.